Hello, in this video we will be creating hard containers in Pygame and here's what we are going to make. Right now on the screen you can see three different rows of hearts and they all work in slightly different ways. So let me remove a couple of hearts and there you can see on the first row we can see full hearts and empty hearts. In the second row we can see only full hearts and in the third row we can see half hearts. And all of this is inside of a sprite class but that isn't strictly necessary. So you could create the entire thing without one. I just thought it was useful because you are usually going to create hearts inside of a sprite class that represents your player. But it's up to you. And I got the artwork for the hearts from an artist called Kenny, who does amazing art for free. So check him out, I'll put a link in the description. But with all of that covered, let's actually jump in and let's create some hearts in Pygame. So here we are in our code, and I already have a couple of lines there. There is all the basic logic you need to create Pygame and I created a sprite class that I've put into a group single and in our game loop I am drawing and updating it. And I called it a link because that's where the logic for hearts basically comes from. And the class is created up here and I will talk about it in just a second. But before that I also imported three different hearts that are called full heart, half heart and empty heart. And they do what the name implies. So this one is quite straightforward. So with all of that out of the way Let's look at our class. So in the class, we have an image and we have a rectangle, the basics you need for any kind of class. And right now, this just shows an image of Link. So if we run the code right now, we can see Link in the middle of our screen, but he can't do anything and he will never be able to do anything in this game. I just want to have something on the screen for the class. It felt a bit weird having it empty, but okay. Then we have an update method that doesn't do anything right now. So now let's get started with the health. And the very first thing we need is an actual number that keeps track of how much health we have, which in my case I call self.health. And let's start with five. But you could put any number in here, it's really up to you. And I will also create an attribute that I call self.maxhealth that I will be setting to 10. And this is going to be the maximum amount of health we are going to have. And we will also have a minimum health, but that's going to be zero. So that doesn't really need its own attribute. Okay, and now we need some methods to influence this number here. And I created two that I called get damage. And all that get damage does is if our self dot health is greater than zero, then self dot health minus equal one. So if you're running this method and our player has greater than zero health, then we are reducing the health by one. So effectively we can never go below zero in our health. And then let me copy the entire thing actually. There is the opposite function that I called get health. And this one is our health is smaller than our self dot max health. Then I want to increase our health by one. So all that these two methods do is increase or decrease our health. Nothing fancy. But now we have to figure out a way to trigger both of these methods. And how I approach this is that if we are pressing the up key, we're running get health. And if I press down, we get damage. So let's implement that. So where we check our events, I'm going to add if event dot type is equal to pygame dot k down down and then if event dot key is equal to pygame dot key up and if that is the case I want link dot sprite dot get health and then equally let me copy this entire line if I'm pressing the down key then I want to get damage and with that logic, our player has health that we can influence. And let me actually test this. So in our update method, I'm going to print self.health. And if I run all of this now, you can see in the bottom of the screen our health. And if I press up or down, and I scroll down in this thing, you can see here the numbers going up or down. It doesn't go down with it right now, I don't know why. But we can't go below zero and if I press all the way up, we can never go higher than 10. So we know this is working. So that's a pretty good start. So let me stop this and replace this with pass again. 
So now we know all of this is working, but we can't see it. So it's not really a good health indicator. So let's actually put some hearts on the screen. And I'm going to start with the simplest approach. And that is just having the full hearts on the screen and not showing the empty hearts. And that's the second row I showed in the beginning. And to get to that, I'm going to create a new method that I call full hearts. And now we need to figure out how to approach this in terms of logic to put hearts on the screen by using this self.health. And the logic is actually surprisingly easy. All I'm going to do is to use a for loop that runs as many times as we have health. So in our case right now, that's going to be five. And on every cycle of this for loop, I'm going to use this health indicator to place the heart a little bit further to the right. So the first heart is going to be at position zero. The second one is going to be at position one times 50. The second one is going to be at position two times 50. And so on, depending on how many hearts we have. And all of this is really just a basic for loop. So for heart in range self dot health. And then in here, we want to use screen dot blit. And what we want to blit is this full heart for now. And full heart. And blit always needs two arguments. It needs the image you want to put on the screen and then the coordinate of this image. And for the coordinates, we always need X and Y. And for my X coordinate, I want heart multiplied by 50. So the first heart is going to be zero. So zero times 50 is going to be zero. But for the first heart, this is going to be 50 because it's one times 50. And then we have two times 50, three times 50 and so on. And then we need a Y coordinate. And in my case, I went with 45. And that's all we need for the simple hearts. So if I call this method now, so self.full hearts, then we should be seeing some health on the screen. There we go. And I can press up and down and we can see the health increasing or decreasing. So pretty nice. So that's our first heart system. And there's one improvement you could be making is that when you're placing the X coordinate, you can increase this by a tiny number, let's say 10. Then we are going to have a little bit of space on the left side of the hearts, which I think is going to look slightly better. Now we have the first kind of heart system, the full hearts. Next up, I want to add the full hearts and the empty hearts. And for that, I created another method that I call empty hearts. Maybe not the perfect name, but um, doesn't matter too much. And here's how this is going to look like. We are still going to run a for loop, but this time the for loop is going to be on our max health. So 10 in our case. And inside of this for loop, we are going to make a check that if the point of health we are looking at this particular for loop is smaller than our health, then we want to print a full heart. However, if the heart in the current for loop is greater than our health, then we want to print an empty heart. And that way we are always going to create 10 hearts, but some are going to be full and some are going to be empty. So let's implement it. So I'm still going to start with for heart in range. And this time it's going to be self dot max health. And now I need some slightly different logic. The first thing I want to check is if this heart is smaller than self dot health. And if that is the case, I want to use this line again, basically. So let me put it down here. And this time I'm going to reduce the Y coordinate to five. So it's above this line. But now I also want an else statement that if this line is not the case, we want to print an empty heart. So I can copy this entire line again. And this time I called it empty heart. Yep, empty heart. And with that, we are done. So let me try this now. And we can't see it because I'm not calling the method. Silly mistake. So self dot empty hearts. And now let's try it again. And there we go. This seems to be working quite well. Cool. So we already have two lines of hearts that work quite well. And the reason I went with this order of hearts is because if we're losing some health, it looks better to have the full hearts at the top. But it really doesn't matter too much. But all right, now we have two different ways of creating hearts in Pygame. 
And to finish this off, let's create our half hearts on the screen. And this is going to be the most complex way, but it's not that much more complicated. And I think for this one, it's best to explain it while I'm actually creating it. So let's go straight to it. I will start by creating a new method that I call half hearts. And the first thing I want to check is how many half hearts we are going to have. So I'm going to create a new variable that I call half hearts total. And all of this is, is self.health divided by two. So right now we have five health. If we divide it by two, we get 2.5. And this is the amount of half hearts we are going to have. And besides this one line, I also found it really useful to check if our last half is going to be a full heart or a half heart. And how I call this variable is half heart exists. And all I need for this one is half hearts total minus int half hearts total is different from zero. So let me explain what happens here. We first check the half hearts total, so the result of this line. Right now, this would be 2.5. Then we take the same number, but turn it into an integer. So the 2.5 will be turning into a 2, because Pygame always rounds down the number when it creates an integer. And then 2.5 minus 2 would be greater than 0. However, if this half hearts would be 2, then this line would also be 2. So this one would be 0, and this entire line would then be false. So if we have a half heart at the end of our line, this is going to be true. If not, this is going to be false. And this is going to become important in just a bit. But let's go through it step by step. Now we come back to our for loop. That for part in range. And in here, we do have to think about this a little bit. The first thing we have to worry about is that we want to see both the half hearts and the background for the empty hearts. So we do have to use self.maxhealth just like we used in this method here. So this one should be quite straightforward for now. But we don't want to have the full max health, instead we want to divide this by two. Because each health point right now is going to be represented by half a point of health, not a full one anymore. So all of this has to be divided by two. But now the problem is you couldn't put a number like 2.5 into a range function, it always has to be an integer. So we have to turn this entire thing into an integer. And for the first line in here, I am only going to worry about full hearts. So if we have 2.5 health, we have two full hearts and one half heart. And I'm going to start by creating the full hearts. And what I want to do in here is if the integer of our half hearts total is greater than our heart. And if that is the case, I want to put the hearts on the screen again. So I can copy again screen.lit and I want to draw a full heart at this position, and this time it is going to be 85. So when it comes down to it, this entire bit is really similar to this entire bit here, except for some minor changes to account for the 0.5 at the end of the number. And just like before, if that is not the case, so else, then we want to draw the empty heart. And for that, I can just copy this entire line again. And again, I have to change it to 85. So now we have the full hearts and the empty hearts. But this leaves us with the half hearts. And this is going to be in an L if statement. And what I want to check in here is first if half hearts exists in the first place. And then I also want to check if the integer of our half hearts total is equal to heart. And I'm going to explain this in just a second. But if all of that is the case, I want to draw a half heart. So I can just copy the entire line again. And this time I am drawing a half heart. And it needs 85 for the Y position again. And this is all we needed. So let's try this now. And again, I forgot to call the method in the update function. So self dot half hearts, and let's try this again now. And there we go. So we can see that this is working. And let me go through now what happened in here. So we are starting with a for loop 
that looks at the max health and divides it by two and takes the integer of the entire thing. And in this for loop, we start by drawing the full hearts. So if we had 2.5 health, this if statement would draw two health points on our screen. Exactly what we wanted. But then we want to look at the half hearts. And that is this entire L if statement. And we start by checking if a half heart exists in the first place. But if we just had this one line, we wouldn't know where the half heart needs to be. And for that, we have this entire line here. And it effectively checks where the half heart needs to be, which is right next to the full hearts. And if that's the case, we are just drawing a half heart. And for everything else, we just have this line where we are drawing empty hearts. And with all of that, we have full heart systems that work quite well. And even nicer, if we changed, for example, our max health to 20, then we would just update the entire thing. So in your game, you could very easily add more and more hearts to the entire thing and create a Zelda-like health system. So I hope you found this useful and I will see you around.